then this video just shows you some really good examples of students' work using found materials to create insects and creatures. I'm looking at the first one here, it's a dragonfly that's been made from um, found materials like nails, nuts and bolts. It's been entwined together using very thin wire. The wings have been made from the shaping of wire and then little threads have been sewn into the wings and the wings been drawn into with pen. There might be some little um, nuts that have been um, sewn on there to give a little bit of texture, a little bit of silver thread. But in most, it's been made from little bits of wire from looking at a realistic picture um, of a dragonfly here. Now this little character inside this jar has been nicely presented so it's looking like a little specimen and he's quite tiny. If we can get the, the lid off the jar just have a little look inside there and you can kind of see the scale where he's quite small his legs are made from um, little nails and he's body's been decorated with little diamonds and this is a little fuse box for part of his body there and his wings have been made from wire with a little bit sewn on to give a little bit of texture. This is a little guy here, a really nice wasp, very simple, made from wire with tape wrapped round to give the effect of his legs and then his wings are made from the cellophane, like sticky back plastic, bits of wire inside little bits of paint to give that effect of the texture of um, a fly's wing. Another lovely dragonfly made completely differently to the first example. This has been made from or his body here from plastics that has been wrapped in paper and it's been painted with acrylic paint and netting has been used to make the textures of his wings. This one has a really beautiful intricate example. The whole of the body of the under side of the insect has been painted really highly detailed but the whole part of that insect there has been made by using clay in little sections there's probably a little bit of wood in there to hold it together like a little armature and then we've used blending with acrylic paints to show the colours of that really colourful insect. This one here has used wood and it's been carved and it's been sanded all the little intricate parts and then wire has been added for the details of the legs and the antenna. Another really nicely presented one here like a little specimen jar is this hornet fly or this little wasp that's been made out of, um, if we just go to the design sheet to have a look because this is really quite effective and you might want to do something like this to plan out before you actually make your 3D. It's been made from foam, florist foam inside that's been carved with some little wires that goes there and then the rest of it's been painted. The wings are made from an old um, badminton shuttlecock there and it's been beautifully presented in one of those little specimen jars on a flower which is really really effective. Another piece of artwork here is a butterfly looking fantastic rainbow butterfly it's been named and that was inspired by looking at that artist's work Michelle Steslin, who uses lots of bottle tops and shapes and different objects she's found to create the patterns of the wings of the butterfly. And again, this particular student has gone away, looked at real pictures of butterflies, got the materials together and then built up around and the materials where she's cut out the wings to create sort of the body with beads to create that beautiful uh, butterfly there, which is very professionally presented with a little label like you would see in a science museum. This is a fabulous example. It's a spider, so we know it's not necessarily an insect because it has got more than six legs. It's got its little name label there, it's a little specimen name label. It's made out of screws and nuts and bolts and an old sort of light that's uh, there like light bulb and it's fastened together using a glue gun so that was a really, really good example there. And again, we've got the way that that, excuse me, <laughs> the spider was made step by step in detail from that diagram here. Now there's some little natural um, pieces here. These are photographs because this particular little fly is really tiny. It's probably only the size of my thumb. And these are in a little exhibition that I went to look at in Oxford 
and there's an actual artwork of lifelike insects by the guy at the bottom there with his little website if you want to have a little more detailed look at his work. A little one there made from, again, found objects out and natural that are in the garden. Moving on over, a really nice ladybird that's made out of fabrics and buttons and textures and then painted. Looking at the artist, um, you know Okita, a Chinese gentleman, Japanese gentleman that makes these fantastic insects from fabric and they're looking very realistic. I love that grasshopper on there, it's got so in detail into the texture and into where all these different colours are working on here. Now another butterfly example which has been nicely presented with a landscape behind in a really nice frame. And coming back to, again, we've got instructions of how that was constructed and put together. So you can spend a lot of money if you want to, making your insects, or you can make them from found objects that you find around the home, in the garage, or in the kitchen.